stole my thunder right there <laughs> because the body of Christ is the most precious thing on the face of the earth. Amen. And what made it per, uh, precious? It's what someone is willing to pay for it. And God so loved the world Amen. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So it was the greatest price imaginable that the father would give his only begotten son yeah. for us, for his family to have a family. And so that's what makes the body of Christ so precious. Another thing that makes it precious is that the Lord's presence is in the midst of his body. Hallelujah. You know, Galatians 2 verse 20 says that uh, we have been crucified in uh, but no longer, when we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. Mm -hmm. So Christ lives in each of you, and that's what, that's what makes you precious. Oh, my goodness. You must, <laughs> I left them on the table in there. I'm sorry. She's going to go get some uh, scriptures I wanted to go over. The most precious thing on the face of the earth, and, but a lot of people are not in good standing with the, uh, with the body of Christ. Uh, they may have problems with the body of Christ. And what I have seen a lot in my life is that um, people have been wounded by someone in the body of Christ. And so they're not willing to commit themselves uh, to the body. They're not, not willing to be fully uh, participating in the body of Christ. And, and it's a tragedy. It's not just a tragedy for that person but it's a tragedy for the other people as well because we have been put into the body of Christ as God has decided. So it's not uh, for us to decide where we belong, where we fit in. It's for God to place us. To place us. And we, uh, by the Spirit of God, are led to where he wants us to be. And then... And, each of you is a vital part right. of the body, and you have something to contribute. Uh, so it's really important, and, and uh, I think the take home uh, from this message is that you are valuable, yeah. and you are a valuable member of the body of Christ. You have yeah. something important to contribute. Amen. That's what I want Amen. you to get out of this Amen. message. And But I'm going to try to develop all of those ideas from the scriptures. And, and the way I want to start is it's easy uh, for us to have a problem with the body of Christ. Somebody might say something that would hurt our feelings or uh, they, they might say uh, that they believe a different way than we believe. And so we take that into our heart. And uh, they might say that that uh, what we believe is not right. Uh, so any of those things could hurt us and cause a wound uh, inside of us. And uh, and it's so easy to see, and we're going to see it with Jesus' uh, ministry himself. And we'll start with uh, Luke uh, 4, 18. <clears throat> and basically what he did, he has never performed a miracle. So he's about 30, some odd years old, 30. And... Uh, he comes to the synagogue, and this is going to be his first message uh, that uh, he preaches there in the synagogue. And, and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Uh, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That, uh, that's, uh, we all need to be anointed by Amen. the spirit of God. Amen. And he Amen. said uh, he was going to uh, heal the brokenhearted mm -hmm. and proclaim liberty to the captives and uh, recovery of sight to the blind. And so he just basically laid out his assignment and what he was going to be doing, his purpose on the earth. And it was because the spirit of the Lord had come upon him. And, and that was in verses, uh, Luke 4, verse 18. And then in 19, he proclaimed, this is the acceptable year. This is the year. Amen. This is the year of God's favor upon each of you. Amen. And uh, then we drop down to 22, and, and it gives the people's re response to that. And they are they marvel. They are amazed 
at what Jesus is saying. And the Spirit of God, I can just see it. The Spirit of God is moving in that synagogue. Mm-hmm. And and uh, be, people are being touched. Uh, Jesus is standing and proclaiming why he's here and, and what he's going to do. And, and the Spirit of God is a, a, has anointed him to say all of that. And it's the Spirit is just moving in, in their midst. And, and they're amazed by it. But then something happens. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. Luke 4, verse 22. Something unexpected happens. And all the people were speaking well of him and admiring the gracious words which were coming out of his mouth. And yet they were saying, is this not Joseph's son? (laughs) So all of a sudden they rejected him. How subtle it was. They were first amazed. They marveled. at at what he was saying, and then they remembered, oh, I'm familiar with this person. I'm familiar with Mm -hmm, this person, mm -hmm. and and so I don't have to listen to him Mm because I I know he's Joseph's son, and I I know Joseph had some faults, and and, uh, Mary's his mother, and Mary had some faults, and they did things that I I didn't uh, agree with, and and so all of a sudden they reject Jesus. He he gave this gracious a message about his purpose on the earth and, and at first they were moved by it but then they remembered who he was they were mm-hmm. familiar with him and so they rejected with the natural him. man okay and, and then later on uh in his ministry after he had been performing miracles they rejected him again at nazareth now, this is an important setting. This uh, puts things into context. Why we reject uh, people and why people reject us and, and why we don't step up and do what God has called us to do. And here is uh, Matthew 13, and we're going to see they reject him again in Nazareth. Let's read these verses here. Okay, Matthew 13, verses 54 through 58. So they, those that were in Nazareth, were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Okay. Because they saw him only as a natural man. Okay, so they were familiar with him and they they were familiar with his uh, father and his mother and his brothers and his sisters. And they all had faults, and and uh, so they weren't judging him on the basis of what he was doing. They were judging him on his family and on his uh, uh, on on the things they were familiar with, uh, because they ha- he had been performing marvelous miracles, mm-hmm. but here he could not do any miracles because of their unbelief. Okay, go ahead, Sherry. Well, I just wanted to uh, before we leave. Uh, Luke chapter, uh, was it chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, um, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me one day and said, as I was reading that scripture, it's one of my favorite passages, and it's the very first um, passage that when the very first message that I gave at a Bible study, that was the the scripture that the Lord um, put in my heart. But what he said to me one day by the Spirit was that when Jesus stood up and he began to give forth Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 in the, in the synagogue, it was a proclamation of war. He's saying, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy the works of the devil. I'm going to heal the brokenhearted. I'm going to heal the blind. I, I'm going to do all of these things. And those religious spirits rose up. And and as Brother Fred was saying, they rejected him, not only because he was, they knew him as Joseph's son, but those spirits within them, those religious spirits were saying, oh, He's come to destroy us. And so they rose up and they 
they brought rejection. And so many times the rejection that we see to the gospel and to the word of God and to the spirit of God uh, and the movement of God is those uh, religious spirits that are rejecting uh, Jesus. Okay. Okay. And uh, we need to know that it's the spirit of God. The same spirit of God that was on Jesus is upon you Amen. and upon me. And that's the reason we can do things uh, on this earth is because of the spirit of Amen. God within Amen within us and not only is he on us he's also within us now in the old testament he would come upon people but today mm -hmm. for the believers today not only is he on us and that's for ministry to others but he's also within oh, us hallelujah. and with uh, his being within us then he gives us wisdom and guidance and direction uh on where to go now revelation chapter uh, 2 verse 4 and it was a letter uh, it, it was a letter uh, to the Ephesians from Jesus. And uh, it, it, my Bible says it was the loveless church. And uh, mm -hmm. he said, uh, uh, I know your works. You're, you're patient and you've done a, a lot of wonderful things, but you need to return to your first love. Return to your first love. And uh, it's easy for us to say that uh, the first love is Jesus Christ because many people have fallen away from Jesus Christ. But uh, this message is focusing on something else. It's focusing on the body of Christ. And uh, today, and so not only can you uh, depart and uh, leave your first love of Jesus, but you could also leave your first love of his body. Mm, because when you mm, become mm. born again, it, you don't have all those prejudices against the body of Christ. And you don't have all those wounds, wounds and you're not carrying mm -hmm. all these burdens about past experiences related to the body of Christ. So I know some people who love Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They spend a lot of time with Jesus Christ and yet they have departed and they have left the body, the body of Jesus. Well, now, why did they leave the body of Christ? Well, it was because they were harmed. Yeah. They were injured. They were wounded. People said unkind things to them, uh, caused them to do things uh, they shouldn't have. They manipulated, controlled, all kinds of things could happen. And, and people get wounds and they begin to carry those wounds around and they don't want to have anything else to do with the body of Christ. Yeah, and they still pray. They still read their, their word, uh, but they do not want to have anything to do with the body. Okay, so I have made a statement and I've made it over the years many times, and that is I have never been wounded by the body of Christ. I, I don't have, I don't carry those wounds. I'm not bitter about the body of Christ. When I was born again at age 13, I began to love the body of Christ and people. I just, I love God's people. I love to be around God's people. And, and no one's ever uh, done anything in the body of Christ to harm me or injure me. I don't have any of those wounds. And yet, and yet, the Holy Spirit dealt with me a few days ago and said that uh, that's true. I haven't been wounded. Uh, I've, uh, I'm thankful for that. I know a lot of people have been wounded, and, uh, but I haven't been. And the Holy Spirit even confirmed that. But, but the Holy Spirit said I had taken offenses mm, about mm, particular mm, mm. ministers of God who had done evil, evil to the to people. The people. And, and I, I became offended by that. And let me just give you some examples. Perhaps uh, they committed adultery. Yeah. Um, uh, they might be a pastor over a congregation or a minister, and they committed adultery. And I know people like that. I know of people like that. And I know people like that. And are people, are they've controlled people? Are they manipulated? Are they've stolen money from the... Uh, from the people of God. Or, or they starve the people. Uh, 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 many, many different ways. And and uh, my heart is for the body of Christ. And so I took offenses. Uh, and the Holy Spirit said, 
that that had affected my relationship with the body of Christ and being able to receive from the body because I had been offended, not by what people did to me, but because they had injured the body of Christ. Mm. I had been offended. And you know what I had to do? I had to repent. Amen. Ooh, Amen. Repentance is good. Uh, yeah. And when the Holy Spirit shines light, mm -hmm. uh, a light on uh, our sin and how we have missed what God really wanted for us, then that's the time to repent. Now, what is repentance? Well, we've been going away from the way <laughs> God wanted us to. We, we find that out. Uh, the Holy Spirit convicts us, convicts our heart. That's what he did with me. I had to turn and go back the way God told me to go. Uh, the way the, the scriptures told me to go, the way the spirit led me to go. And I had to repent. And I even confessed my sins uh, to Sherry that I had been offended over the years by some evil things that ministers had done to the body of Christ. A and the Holy Spirit showed me that that was impacting my relationship with the Lord. And so I repented and the blood of Jesus is over me. I I've, uh, mm, I I've pled the blood of Jesus over me. So I, I'm okay. I, I'm okay. I, I made a mistake. Uh, but we've all made mistakes. But that uh, the important thing here, though, is how does this type of mistake affect our relationship with the body of Christ? For you see, Sherry and I travel all over the world, and we minister, and, and we present the gospel, and we we uh, expect miracles. We expect the Lord to show up on with us and work with us uh, because he has sent us there to do things. And so great things happen wherever we go because we're expecting great things to happen. Amen. But he wants to take us all to a higher and higher Our level. level. And we're, we're being changed from glory, glory to, to glory. glory. And, and that's what this message is about today. And, and many of us, uh, are familiar with our own faults and our own uh, weaknesses. And, and so consequently, we don't fully commit ourselves to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But you are valuable to the body of Christ. And you have something important to contribute to the body of Christ. You are not just a sponge uh, to take up yeah, things, yeah, soak it up. No, no, you do, you just you're more than that. God has made you very valuable. You're valuable to His body, and you have something that you can supply. And so, don't be like the people who looked at Jesus and knew the Spirit was moving, knew the Spirit was there and moving among them, and then remembered the familiar things. Oh, but mm. I have made this mistake or I have done this or I, I'm weak in this area and I, I might not be a good speaker or I might uh, not be, I might have anger or any of that. So we're familiar with our own faults, but we need to get over that. We need to ask for the Lord to strengthen us uh, so that we can Commit to the body of Christ somewhere where God places you. I want you to read this of 1 Corinthians 12 uh, because you are valuable to the body of Christ. Read these verses. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12 through 14. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that body being one are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many members. Okay, now the next few verses say that there's a hand and a an eye and an ear. Yes. We need, we need every part of it. I, I'm not going to go there. We're not oh. going to read all those because we are, we're all familiar with that passage. We need each other. You are unique. Amen. And God has put you in a special place in his body 
where you can contribute, not just where you are going to take things and receive things, but where you give your supply. That's what Ephesians 4, 16 is. He's put you in the body where it's you have supply. something to contribute to other people and they need to hear from you. And that's the reason after we uh, teach for a few moments each time, we will open it up and we want to hear from you. What What is the Lord saying to you? What What, what are your needs? What, what do you have to contribute? You are valuable to the body of Christ. Now, I want you to read these verses uh, in, uh, later on in the same in passage. In 1 Corinthians 12, verses 24 and 25. While our present parts need no special treatment, but God has put in the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal value or concern for each other. Okay, it's Hallelujah. that phrase I want to focus on. Equal concern for, for each, each other. other. Equal concern for each other. And we can't say, well, that person over there has offended me, so I'm not so concerned about them. I'm not so concerned about what they think or say or do, and I can't, I can't receive from them. See, it says equal concern for, each, for other. each other and 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 don't put yourself down because you are a part of that group that's called for a equal concern for you oh hallelujah and, and so don't get familiar with yourself and, and look back mm -hmm. on your faults but you realize and remember this that you are made unique mm -hmm. and you have a unique contribution I mean, that God I mean, wants you to provide and supply to the body of Christ. You are unique. You have a unique supply and no one else will present it. And if you do not supply, then the body of Christ is going to go without what Lacking. God has put inside of you. I mean, it, the amen. body of Christ will go lacking. And many times, uh, Christians want to put themselves down and say, well, I just don't have anything to contribute. Well, if you have Jesus Christ inside of you, you have something, something to, contribute. to contribute because you're unique and you have a unique contribution to make. So don't think about your faults. Think about the greater one who lives inside of you mm, and he can make a difference in other people's lives. Amen. You know, this is what I'm seeing right now. Some of you are encouragers. You you encourage, you bring hope to people. And then there's others of you that are intercessors. You you pray. And that is that is so very important. That's the arm of God the in the body of Christ. Intercessors are the arm. And some of you have so much compassion inside of you. Uh, you don't like to even kill a bug. Uh, and, and that's, you know, you have that compassion that rises up that brings healing, uh, to other people. Uh, some of you are, are the brain, you have strategies, you have creative ideas. And so all of those parts are very important as brother Fred was saying. Amen. That's good. That's very good. Now I want you to think about what happens if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We don't really understand our role in the body of Christ. And I want you to read here from mm -hmm. uh, 1 First Corinthians uh, 11. Now, what I want you to do is, is to put this into context. It's about taking communion. Yes, yes. Taking communion. But there's so, there's so much wisdom in this passage here about the body of Christ. And we need to know uh, how we fit you need to know how you fit in the body of Christ mm -hmm. and you need to have equal concern for all the members, each of the members that you, uh, that's in your world, in mm -hmm. your part of the body. And so I want Sherry to look, read a, a few verses here. First Corinthians 11. Verses 27 through 32. And as brother Fred said, this is concerning communion. Therefore, whoever eats this bread 
or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy <clears throat> manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For let a man or a person, a person examine themselves, and so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment unto himself, not, this is very important right here, right. not discerning the Lord's body. Okay, so uh, before she goes on, I want to just emphasize something here. If we don't really understand the body of Christ and where we fit in the body of Christ, how we supply things to the body of Christ, then it's going to open up three problem areas. Mm -hmm. Three problem areas. By, by people doing that, not understanding the communion and not understanding the body of Christ and how they fit in it, many are weak, weak. many are, are sick, sick and some even die prematurely. So the point of this message today is for you to be strong in your physical amen, body, amen. in your spirit, in your spirit, for you to be healed and for you to live a long, successful life. Amen. So if Hallelujah. you can take hold of these uh, truths that I'm sharing with you tonight, that's the impact it's going to have on you. It's going to strengthen you in your spirit, man. It's going to strengthen you in your natural physical body. It's going to give you health, uh, uh, wholeness, and wellness. Amen. And you will live a successful, long life. life. Hallelujah. This is an important message, and these truths are important. So I'm going to go ahead and let Sherry continue reading. Okay. For this reason, <clears throat> many are weak and sick and many have fallen asleep for if we would judge ourselves we would not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened by the lord and that is not punishment the chastening of the lord is by the spirit of god it's not putting cancer on someone to teach them something it's not putting them in an accident so they would learn something the, that's not the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is by the Spirit of God. He's our teacher. He's our helper. And this says, He chastens the, of the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. And so praise the Lord for that. Okay. So when, uh, when you think about the body of Christ, when you think about Jesus, I want you to think about him in three different ways. Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is in heaven, but he's also in you. Uh, that was the first, but then the second one is the body of Christ, because Jesus is also in the body of Christ. He's That's the head. The, he's the head, and we are the body, and the third part is the wafer that we take in communion, and now what that said, we just read, you don't take the communion unworthily. Now, what does that mean? In an unworthy <clears throat> manner. In an unworthy manner. Now, what that really means is if you do it on, on your own works and you don't acknowledge the blood of Jesus. Amen. If Amen. you do it on your own works, then our works are as filthy rags. Our righteousness mm, is as filthy, filthy rags. rags. That's the unworthy part. We have to realize it's Jesus who makes us worthy mm -hmm. by his blood. Hallelujah. So that, and this is 2 Corinthians 5, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So in Christ, we are the righteousness of God. And so what I want to say here, and this may shock you, is the most evil person on the earth can still take communion. Oh, did you hear me? The most evil person on the earth can still take communion because they can, when they repent, ask for forgiveness for the sins, plead the blood of Jesus over them, and then Jesus' blood makes them the righteousness of God in him. It's not their works. And they may have done evil, evil, evil things, but if they repent and ask for forgiveness, then they're 
their sins have become white as snow. Oh, Ooh, oh, there oh, by oh. the blood of Jesus. See, don't underestimate the value of the blood Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is powerful. And what and, he did in his body. And, and he he that blood, one drop of blood will take care of all of the sin that you have ever committed, that you will ever commit. One drop of the blood. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. Now there's another verse here in uh, 1 Corinthians 10. It says, as we partake, as we bless these cups of blessing, as we, and I'm talking about in communion, then we're actually partaking of the blood. And so when we're drinking the cups of blessing of the communion, those elements, then we're drinking his blood. That's what 10, mm -hmm. uh, 1 Corinthians 10 says. And then when we eat the wafer or whatever cracker or whatever it is, we're partaking of his body. So there's yeah. three things about uh, Jesus I want you to realize. There's mm -hmm. Jesus in heaven. Jesus is in you. That's number one. Jesus, the body of Christ is Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, his body, he's the head. We're the body. And the third is the wafer that we take or the cracker or whatever you want to call it. So I want you to read this mm -hmm. verse. Really important. And so don't get your idea to think that only Jesus is in heaven and in your heart. That's the only one because mm. he's also in the, the head of, of the, the body. body. And that's where people miss mm -hmm. it. That's where they miss this, the truth of this message. They don't see him in the body. They just think that he's in heaven or in their heart, but he's also in your brothers and sisters. Ooh, in the hallelujah. Body hallelujah. Of Christ. Okay, mm, read this verse mm, here. Mm. First Corinthians 10, <clears throat> verse 16. Is the cup of blessing which we bless not a sharing in the blood of, of Christ? Is the bread that we break not a sharing? Oh, hallelujah. Love this. That word sharing can also be partaking. Yes. We partake of his blood Amen. hallelujah and what his blood does and we partake of what he did in his body hallelujah which we break not a sharing in the body of christ hallelujah the stripes upon his back every time you take that wafer you are acknowledging oh the 39 stripes that he took upon his back which represent, by the way, every category of sickness or disease. And he took it all. He took it all. And he and, and that blood gushing out uh, is, is what we partake of. I partake of his healing and those stripes upon his back every time I, I take that communion uh, cup. Hallelujah. Okay. Now I want to go someplace else, and this is James chapter three, and I'll have some cherry to read some verses here. But uh, what I want you to know, if you've been wounded and you're um, by someone in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you take an offense because of that, uh, and you carry that around as a burden, then uh, you, you may seem in your own thinking that you're justified in doing that. You, you might even think that you're wise in doing that. Or if you've seen somebody do something that was wrong, you might take an offense. Somebody like a minister, if they've uh, uh, ro robbed uh, money from the mm -hmm. believers, or you might think, well, you're, you're justified in doing that, or you're wise in, in doing that. But let me tell you, there's a difference between the wisdom Step of heaven, heaven and the wisdom of earth. And so I want to share to read this. Mm. We need the wisdom of heaven, not Hallelujah. what we Help us what Lord. causes us to look like we're wise. Amen. Read these verses. James 3, verses 14 through 18. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and do not lie against the truth. This wisdom is is does not descend from heaven. There is a wisdom yeah. see, that's on the earth and it causes us to think we're wise right. when we're not. So go ahead. <laughs> but it's earthly, sensual, demonic. For where there is envy and strife and self-seeking, confusion and every evil thing are there. 
But the wisdom that is from above, the heavenly wisdom, is first pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace peace okay so do you want to take the wounds that the body of christ has caused you and and say well i'm justified in being wounded and justified in being bitter and having unforgiveness you never justified because jesus shed the blood to cover oh, all to of cover it, it put to it cover all it. Hallelujah. That. that that is just earthly wisdom it may sound like wisdom it may look like wisdom. Mm -hmm. You may even see other people doing the same thing, but it's not the wisdom from above. Mm -hmm. The wisdom from the above, see, is not going to make you bitter and uh, angry. The wisdom that is from above is peaceable, and it's going to mm -hmm. make you quiet and and present all kinds of good fruit. That's what the wisdom that is from above. And the wisdom from above is to don't take these wounds. Jesus bore your mm -hmm. all of your pain and grief and sorrow. Jesus bore it on the cross. It's not a, a matter of if he's going to do it or will he do it or maybe he's do it. No, he did it on the finished work of the cross. All of all of the wounds that people have caused you, they were all paid for so that you could be healed by Jesus on the cross. I mean, and you might think, well, I. I I take an offense because somebody in the body of Christ has hurt somebody else. And that, that was kind of, that yeah, was that's my, me that's too. What, what the Holy Spirit was dealing with me because I thought I was justified uh, to be offended because uh, ministers did evil things to the body of Christ. Uh, but then, and let, then he gave me this verse. And, and let me say that I have over my <laughs> lifetime, I have seen many ministers do many evil things. And every time I, I thought uh, that I was justified in being offended, then now God has shown me this verse. And this is Romans 14, 12, mm, mm, mm. Uh, 14, 4. Yeah. And I want Sherry to read that. Who are you to <clears throat> judge another servant? To his own master, he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. Okay, so let's Hallelujah. let's just say let's say that over my lifetime, I've seen uh, twenty or thirty ministers do evil things to the body of Christ, and uh, let's say I I made a judgment about them; they did this evil thing. But where are they today? Yeah. Well, see, did some of them turn and repent? And I don't know; I, I couldn't tell you. Let's say there were 30 people that I observed doing evil things over my lifetime, uh, ministers doing evil things to the body of Christ. And, and can I say that all 30 of those, none of them have repented? Oh, no, I can't say. I can't judge. Yeah, because, we don't know. Because Jesus told me not to judge by appearance. See, my by appearance, I saw them do evil. I, I heard a report they did evil. But I can't do it because God, see, looks at the heart. And they can do an evil thing. And I've done evil. And But I turn and repent. That's what David did. Yes. See, David, uh, he committed adultery. He, he murdered. He, he did lots of evil things. But he was a man after God's own heart. He turned and repented. And, and so he was forgiven his sins. And that's the way people are today. Yes, everybody sins. Everybody mm -hmm. has sin. And we may have seen it with our own eyes that a person has sin. But as time goes on, we don't know whether they have repented, whether the blood of Jesus over, and they may be in good standing with God today, and yet we would be out of uh, standing out of grace. Uh, we'd be in a bad place because we were carrying judgments against that person. We saw them sin. We knew they sinned, but we don't know what happened after that. And I tell you, if they were sensitive at all to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit began to deal with their heart and caused them to know that what they had done was sin. And many of them did repent. 
Many of them have repented and many of them are in good standing with God, even though they have made bad decisions and, and they have committed evil deeds. They are today <laughs> in good standing. And so how can I judge another man's servant? And, the, and if they're uh, servants of Jesus Christ, how can I judge his servants when I don't know if they're going to rise or fall because he's the master will determine whether they rise or fall. Amen. Not Amen. me. Not me. Oh, hallelujah. So I hope, I'm just going to bring this to conclusion. I hope this message will help you that you are valuable Amen. and you have a valuable contribution to make. And, and I'm not talking about in 20 years from today. And not, yeah, yeah. not 20 years or 30 years or 40 years from today, you'll, you'll make a contribution. I'm saying you, God has put something inside of you that today the body of Christ needs you to make your contribution today. Begin making it today. And you might think, well, I, I'm, I'm just insignificant. I, there are other people that know more than me. They know the more of the word or they know more. That, that doesn't matter. God has made you unique. He has put unique things, valuable things inside of you. Mm -hmm. And the body of Christ needs to hear from you. You need, and it may only be prayers. It may be intercession. It may be a witness to uh, a prodigal who has gone astray. Uh, who uh, We don't know, but you know. And the Holy Spirit will show you what your purpose is. You are valuable. You have things deposited in you that are valuable. And the body of Christ needs you to stand oh, up yeah. today okay. and do what God has put you on this earth to do. Thank you for being here. Amen. And I'm going to 